Hi, this is John again, and today I'm going to be working on a clock. It's, uh, I, th I think the name of it is a golden hour. Uh, let me pan up here a little bit. It, uh, this is what it is. And the glass piece um, rotates around once an hour, and the minute hand is attached to the glass piece and the hour hand is geared to the minute hand. So if, if the minute when the minute hand's turning, the hour hand moves the appropriate amount of uh, distance around. Obviously it's a lot smoother than that when the motor's running, but uh, the motor's died in this one. So I have the motor all scattered out in pieces here. And actually, uh, let me just get a little shot of the inside here. There's a date here stamped in there, 322.56. So, I think the company, I read online, I think the company uh, started in 51 or 52. So this was kind of an earlier production model. But anyway, this section here is the motor that came out. And it's a synchronous 60 hertz motor. Um, I took a reading on the coil and the coil doesn't have any continuity so uh, one of the w wires is broken inside or burnt apart or something. But that's not the only thing wrong with it. It also, here's a the drive gear on top of the motor. Coil. The coil sits like that. And then this piece drops on top. And so this is supposed to spin it. Uh, they've got a one-sixth here, so that's one-sixth RPM, and uh, I presume CW is clockwise, 125 volts, 3 watts, by Jefferson Electric. So I don't know if this is the original motor even to the clock, but uh, you can buy these online. They're, I don't know, 40-some 40, 40 dollars, I think, for a replacement. It may not look exactly like this. But anyway, I got to thinking, okay, what what do I have that has a synchronous motor in it? Well, I got to thinking of these things. Well, maybe these have a synchronous motor because they're just continuous. They run 24 hours a day. And so I took it apart, and that's what's on this side. And as you can see... This is a little bent out of shape, but if you put the two cases next to each other, they're almost identical. And so I pulled this apart, and I got the, the actual motor part out of it, but um, I'll throw some pictures on to show what actually happened. It, uh, it wasn't a pretty sight when when I finally got it out. But uh, this metal part here is pressed in through that hole and just kind of swaged into place. And so what I did is I took a center punch and pounded that out. That's how I got the original one apart and it, it came apart fine. And so I got this motor out, tried to take it apart, and uh, this thing just kind of fell to pieces. But you can see that it's all brown, like it's been getting hot. So, what do I do? Go to Amazon, of course, and get me a brand new one of these timers for 10 bucks. And so I'm going to rip this thing apart and try to do a little bit more careful job of getting the motor out and <clears throat> transfer the motor then from this guy 
into the inner workings of this guy. It's, it's interesting. Every almost everything in these two motors is nearly identical. So this plastic gear out of the Intermatic here looks just like that one that came out of this, which I have no idea how old it is. Let's see what we got in here. Well, it looks right. And it looks like we have a very similar motor here. There we go. Intermatic made in Mexico. So the only thing I'm really interested in is this, the uh, synchronous motor in here. And it's still swaged on there. I'm going to bend these tabs to get this gear train off and expose the motor. So I got it all back together. Maybe I'll just slap it back in the box and tell Amazon I don't need it anymore. Oh, just kidding. Just kidding. My genuine Ford pliers. Uh, may be too well worn to be able to do this little intricate job. Yep, need to find something different. No, nope, maybe not. Looks exactly the same as the other two motors. So I think I'm going to try using a Dremel to uh, cut around that. And here we go! have to be real careful pounding on this so I don't break this plastic housing. That was my demise on the last one. And there we go.
here's our new motor and here's our old case so let me just I'm going to hook this up and see how well it runs there's this little knob here I have to cut off because the original here's the original it didn't it was pretty much flat on the bottom so I have to cut that off I may, to, may need to get that to fit better before I put this all together. Handy dandy Chinesium files. That's that's a little raised up too, so I need to go pound that down. There we go. There it is. The old one. I need that one. That has two holes. These others have three that are in different spots. So this one has these center hole for that. Offset hole for this guy. One here. Now we'll plug it back in and see if it starts. Look at that. We have success. Now all I have to do is take it all apart, put the gears on. Let's see, this one goes first. I've had this apart so many times that I know which which one goes where. That goes first, this guy second, and this one last. And this guy on. Well, it looks like we're doing pretty good here. So this thing is geared down enough that it's got enough torque at this outside gear to turn that glass in the clock. One other little issue. There's a row or a, a section in here that the teeth are missing with this other gear. 
it has some slop on the on the shaft, and so if it rides up a certain, you know, to the very end against the face of this one, then it wears away at those teeth. So I may need to make a little bushing just to hold this gear so they mesh not here but out here. This was pressed into the piece of sheet metal, the sheet metal housing, and I won't be able to do that. And so I'm going to just drill and tap the center of this for a 832 little hex screw. I guess that'll work pretty good. It'll be using the screw as a locator now instead of this boss down on the bottom. That's going to pretty much disappear when I drill and tap this for the screw, so the screw will be the, the centering point for that. Which I imagine that'll work pretty good. First I thought of super gluing this piece in to there. But I don't know how warm that coil gets and Super glue doesn't do well with high heat. I have no idea how hot it gets. The old coil was actually turning the plastic brown, so I imagine there is some heat that that coil puts out. Hmm, guess that hole goes all the way through into the shaft. This shaft doesn't stick in too terribly far, maybe, I don't know, less than an eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to try super gluing it in. Going to clean it first with some acetone to make sure there's no oil on anything. I've decided to tap it before I glue it in just in case the tap runs up against the pin and pushes it out. So I'm going to tap this first. And it looks like my eighth inch hole even is too small. Okay, let's see how this works.
and it looks like I lost most of that little protrusion too. So I'm just going to file that down. It looks pretty close, and it appears to be set up. Alright, on with the assembly process. I think I'm ready to assemble it. So it's actually the, the metal piece in here has to be like this tab. I'm looking at the flat of that tab with the side of the gearbox and making sure that, that those two are parallel because there's a little bit of slack between the plastic arm or the winding and the metal piece. So it looks like I need to tighten that up just a little bit more. Put on her, I don't know what this gear is called, uh, armature gear? I don't know. A little bit of gap right there. And it looks like that's where it likes to ride because all these teeth are mangled up in here. So I need to just make a small spacer to fit right there. So I made this little gear, this little spacer. I just took uh, one of these spare plastic gears and I took an X-Acto knife and I whacked off a little piece of it and sanded it down, cut off all the little teeth and so now I've just got that little bushing in there to take up the extra slack. So now when I put this on and snap it into place Everything is loose but snugly in place and, and it spins freely. And so I looked at the clock. Let's get up there. So there's a, a gear up in here that drives the glass and that gear mates up with this gear and so for the minute hand glass plate to rotate in a clockwise direction that means that this big gear here needs to rotate counterclockwise to drive it around. And so that means that this 
top gear needs to also go in a counterclockwise direction. And so this little gizmo, if I put this finger on this side, between this little post and in here, put that finger in here, Come on, get down there. There we go. And hook up power to it. Where's my power lines? There's my power lines. So if I hook up power, this thing should go clockwise. So then if I put this finger on this side, it will drive counterclockwise. So this this little motor it'll it'll go whatever direction it starts moving at, and so it needs this one-way clutch to tell it which way to start turning. So if it starts spinning the wrong direction, it stops and starts spinning the other direction. So then it's freewheeling that way. So I think we're ready to just can everything back up again. And try to get it installed. And so I'm going to use the old cover plate, Jefferson Electric cover plate. I have these uh, two new ones, but don't want Made in Mexico on it, and uh, don't want that one. These both have the same part number, WG2030, WG2030. This one's a WG1040. So obviously they're all, looks like they're all made by the same company. So that fits in there, and I don't think I'm missing any parts. And so I can start bending tabs together. Nothing is rattling loose. So I just need to now connect these two wires to the clock wires and then screw it back into place. Let me get this cleaned up. All right, I got it installed. Got wire nuts on the two connectors or the connections. Uh, I put some shrink wrap, shrink tubing, over the ends of the, I don't know if you remember, the coil had these two ends poking out before the wires, and so I just shrink, put shrink tubing over both of those things so they wouldn't have exposed wires on them. And I plugged it in now, and it is running. So let's tip it up. Let me see my messy desk. We'll move the oil can. There we go. So it's coming up on 10 after. So right now it's uh, 3.05. So I read online that you're only supposed to turn this thing in the clockwise direction. So I'm 
not quite sure why, but it feels like just a friction fit onto the glass. So now we set the minute hand to five after, and then take the little weight in the back and flop it over once, Oop, wrong way, to there, and we should be at three o'clock. 3.05. Look at that. So I could have spent $40 and just bought a, you know, got a replacement motor to stick in there. But I thought this was a lot more fun to do. And it has, uh, if that's the original case, it's got still got the original gears in it now. So I guess we'll wait and see how well it keeps time. But there we go. And this is again, a, it's a golden hour. Um, I think it's made by, this says Jefferson Electric and I'm wondering if that's what the company name was. I'll have to look online again to make sure uh, who made these things, but gotta clean it up. I did read that the uh, gold it's a cast housing with 24 karat gold overlay on it. So they were a nice clock in their day. And it looks like it's about 7 after now. And yep. So, so far, so good. That is cool. The reason I'm so fascinated with these is my aunt and uncle. On my dad's side, uh, my Uncle Vince and Aunt Edna, they had a clock just like this. It was always out on their table in the living room when we went to visit. And me being me, I was fascinated with how it worked. So that's kind of cool that I found one. I, I don't know where I picked this one up, garage sale or something. So there you have it. Thanks for watching.